traveling? I do have an apple. One apple? Y'all have a good day. All right, thank you, sir. Where am I going left here? Left. That is the Wyatt Earp cottage. It's cute. I could live in a cottage like that. We unfortunately can't actually go to it. It's all fun stuff on private property. So we'd be right off the highway. So really easy access to things. Got a paved road. Yeah, what is it, 20 miles, 30 miles to Blythe? Yeah, it's only like 30 miles to Blythe and it's gonna be this whole lot here. A little bit of trash to pick up, no big deal. All right, let's go walk the property this way. Why do you like it? Because you have the railroad tracks right here and the highway, so when you start doing all the manufacturing of all your goods and services, easy transportation in and out. Totally. Because my intention is to now be a homesteader, apparently, right? Yeah. Here, come walk my new property with me. Oh, and there's an outhouse. That's perfect. Well, I'm a little disappointed in the lack of needles, but... I'm sure if I get some ladies of the night, that will change. That's definitely a boat. Ooh, I love a place that comes with shoes. Oh, look, it already comes with a grave. So what do you guys think? Do you think this would be a better property investment than the last parcel I looked at? I'm gonna assume anyone that has been watching any of my videos already knows that the California land thing was a joke. There's no way that I would buy land in California. I think that California is the state embodiment of the saying, why are all the pretty ones crazy? Oh God, she's going unscripted again. Now with that said, the video of <laughs> where I asked, should I buy this? acreage or whatever a couple videos back which is now my third highest viewed video got a wild assortment of comments it's the most commented video uh, most commented on video that i've had and so um, i think whether or not i bought that acreage is fairly irrelevant at least in my mind because like i said at the very beginning of that video i have no intentions on living on it i have no intentions on not traveling yet i got a whole bevy of homesteading advice Whatever, I don't care, it's the internet, so whatever. But what I did get out of the comment section when I went through and you know, I, I just filtered by um, top comments and what I, what I saw was fairly concerning because so much of them are just fear-based. It, it's not reality-based, it's fear-based. And what was most alarming to me is that there were over five comments that either insinuated or straight out said that I would be raped. Okay, so yes, I am female. Yes, females do get raped more often than men. Females get raped most often in the city. None of you know if I've actually experienced sexual assault already in my life, so... All right, editing Lex coming in here. I know rape is a very 
uh, personal subject to a lot of people. It might be triggering. Um, and to, to the point that I made, it's I'm responding to comments about it, so I'm not trying to downplay it. I don't know. It's just such a weird thing to put out on the internet your concerns for someone buying five acres of off-grid property that they went to go visit with another adult and then commented about one person even went so far as to say that ranch hands from one of the properties, you know, in the in the mileage area would come rape me and then flee to Mexico. You guys have wild imaginations. Now, I know that's not the majority of people, certainly not the people that end up subscribing and watching further videos. I am doing my best to be appreciative of the concern of strangers for my well-being, but I don't think it really has anything to do with my well-being. I think it has to do with the fears that are pummeled into society in order to control, which is one of the reasons uh, I live on the fringes of society as a nomad. Also, I think it's important to note, and you know, I hate to be Captain Obvious here, but I'm 38, widowed, full of tattoos, and I chose to live off-grid on public lands in a cargo trailer. I think I'm a little beyond worrying about what people actually think about me. So, um, I appreciate everyone taking the time to comment. Okay, hey, editing Lex here again. I'm probably gonna pop in quite a few times throughout this video because stream of consciousness Lex doesn't always speak in human languages or at least not in cohesive sentences. So what I'm saying here is I appreciate everyone commenting. I'm appreciative of everyone watching that video. My concern is that there is a culture of fear out there which was prevalent and um, presented itself in the comments section of that acreage video. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about my mentality when it comes to fear and some recommendations I have, particularly for other women out there, that might be uh, stagnant because of fear. A lot of the fears had to do with water. And yes, if I was to live there, there is a water solution. I actually wrote a big blog on it. So if you're really interested, you can you can read the blog. But you know, as a nomad, you have to go get your water anyway. So whether you live in an unimpressive build like mine or you live in some $100,000 van or whatever, you're still gonna have to go and do water haul in order to live a nomad life. And if you're watching this channel, I assume you have interest in this lifestyle, otherwise, I mean, I'm just not that interesting. So it has to be the lifestyle that you're watching this for. So if you're worried about water, you're gonna be water hauling anyway. You're gonna get, you're, you're gonna have to dump your own sewage. You're gonna have to be comfortable being far away from medical services and retail services. So let's even take when I was camp hosting in Mount Hood National Forest, in order for me to get Riot to a vet in the case of an emergency would have made me have to travel all the way basically to Portland and that would have been over an hour drive. If I needed medical services, it would have been a minimum of 40 um, miles to get down the mountain. So even when I'm living this normal life, which I have for the last year and a half, all the concerns that were in the comments about that off-grid acreage is what I do every day, bad road to get into a campsite all the time. Being six miles from the nearest paved road, pretty regular. So if you wanna be a nomad, these are things that you're gonna to have to be okay with. Okay, quick caveat here. If you're a nomad, like in the way that I like being a nomad, which means that you're far away from people, you're doing your own thing, you are integrated into nature. There are nomads that do urban van life. There are nomads that do RV parks and you're always around all the amenities you would be, whether you lived in an apartment or a house or whatever. So caveat, if you wanna be a nomad, like how I'm doing it and many others. And if you're watching these nomad channels, I assume that that's, that's what you're looking for is inspiration to have your own adventures. Um, and, and so all the fears that um, came up in that video about should I buy that acreage or not are things that are real for me every single day. 
and would be real for you every single day if you did choose a nomadic lifestyle. And I think it's important to have that reality check that if you're not comfortable having to walk six miles to the nearest road to get help, if you're not comfortable hauling water and not having a source of unlimited running water, if you're not comfortable not having a known vet nearby you, if you're not willing to take those risks, then a nomad lifestyle is probably just an illusion for you. Um, just a pipe fantasy. It's it's. <laughs> You have to be okay with those realities. I think it's also super, super important to note that the human condition has a 100% fatality rate. So you have a choice. You can either not do things that you're inspired and your heart seeks to do because you're worried about all these different things that in the end is a, you're worried about death, or you can go, okay, well, I'm gonna die regardless. (laughs) Why don't I live while I'm alive? That's the choice that I made. I've been a little reticent to make videos based on my opinion um, because opinions seem to get people in trouble anymore. (laughs) I don't know why I said that opinions are getting people into trouble anymore. That has pretty much been true since the beginning of time. If we look at what happened to Socrates, Jesus, Joan of Arc, Gandhi, JFK, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not putting myself (laughs) or my thoughts in that class of people, although by the time that I die, boy, would I like to be associated with them. But all I'm saying is um, it is not new that we have self-appointed persecutors of uh, people that live by the courage of their convictions. So I think I'm just getting more courage about putting that onto the internet. So, uh, but I just wanted to pop in to say, this is not new. Although I kind of said opinions get people into trouble anymore. Well, it's always been. And there's going to be people that disagree with me, but. All right, I'm popping in because I don't like how I said that. So basically what I'm saying is YouTube is a really fun hobby and I'm glad that it can make me some money, but I do have other sources of revenue. So what I would like to do is use uh, YouTube in a way that I feel matches my integrity and intention for the platform. Which is why, you know, I'm not hawking you guys products, even though people do email me to make sponsored videos. I just, I don't want to sell anyone anything. I don't do extreme cinematography outside of what I find fun because I don't want to sell anyone a lifestyle that, you know, when they get into it, realize that it's, it's not what the editing and color grading showed. Um, you know, it, uh, Basically, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of different intentions to people that make YouTube videos, and I think they're all valid. My intention is to not bullshit anyone. I want to show you what my reality of living a nomad life is and doing it my way, Frank Sinatra style. And part of that going forward is going to be speaking my mind onto some nomad mentalities and um, maybe values going forward, starting with the following. There were a lot of what ifs in the comments and what if is a very valid game. What if this, what if that, what if this, what if that? And usually it's fear-based. What if I get a flat tire? What if you get raped? What if you run out of water? What if you can't get water? What if this, what if that? Well, what if everything worked out? What if I can haul water and that's not an issue for me? What if every one of my neighbors is really nice? What if all my due diligence checks out and it's a great uh, opportunity? What if, just like education, it might not be seen as an investment to most people because it takes money out of your pocket, but what if it gives me other things? you know, that I find valuable, in which case that land would be an investment? What if everything's just fine. What if things go wrong, but it teaches me lessons? So I would encourage people to take all those what ifs and just turn them positive. So if you say, what if this bad thing? Well, what if this good thing? It's really a mindset. And um, it's (laughs) that video just, the comments were so concerning to me because it, it, it wasn't the negativity towards me. I'm going to do whatever I want anyway. Um, I think it was the viewer, Mark from Arizona, that, said, that laughed and said, you're going to do whatever you want anyway, and that's absolutely true. But boy, did it make people click and, and got watch time, and I don't know. I guess that's the, I guess that's the game of YouTube. So, so the video 
the video did well. Uh, but, but what concerned me was just the amount of fear and worry and doom and gloom. And it's like, well, that's part of the reason I don't want to live in, in typical society. It's the reason I want to live out here is because I am not adaptable or compatible with that mindset whatsoever. So my advice is, is have I been struck by fear before? Yes, but I find it my um, responsibility as part of my life and part of uh, my adulthood to look objectively and rationally uh, whether that fear really exists. If it does, to mitigate it to the best of my ability. Mostly, you know, preparedness helps to mitigate fear. Um, but otherwise, it's a mentality. It's just your mind. It's your imagination. Just like the person that commented that ranch hands from one of the nearby properties would come rape me and run to Mexico. That's not about me. That's that guy's sick imagination. So, I mean, sometimes you have to really subjugate what is your thought and what is a thought that you borrowed or, or took from someone else. Um, you know, I, I also want to say as an inspiration maybe to anyone else, because really when I started this YouTube channel, it was uh, to encourage other women out there that might feel like they have a role in society. Um, and I'm just trying to show that you can do whatever you want. You don't have to adhere to anything. There's a different way to live, especially in the age of technology when you can work from anywhere. You can live however you want. There's no need to impress others. Most importantly and most notably that I want to say is any juncture of my life where I have tried to worry about or listen to the judgment of others, I've been absolutely miserable. Um, anytime that I filtered my actions with concern with how I would be perceived, I usually was not happy. Things usually did not work out for me. So the only opinion that matters to me truly is my own maybe my dogs. Um, and I would encourage anyone listening to this to make that a, a personal policy that the only opinion that they uh, worry about or are concerned about is their own opinion. Um, and, um, and, and I hope that for those of you that play the what if game a lot with yourself and for others, um, you, uh, you maybe switch that. And what if the good thing happens? What if the good shoe drops? Um, because f fear is really incompatible with faith. And if you're a person of faith, then you shouldn't be living in fear anyway. And if you are really fearful, you're never going to do the things you dream about. So, and that makes me sad for people. Now with that diatribe over, I'm going to go back to living in what someone called an unimpressive uh, cargo trailer that was not enviable probably because I don't really give a shit. I like it. No offense. I mean, that's kind of the, the point of the channel, isn't it? How to, how to, it's like, a, it's like Mark Manson's book, which I really enjoyed the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I live to embody not giving a fuck. Now that doesn't mean you don't give a fuck about nothing. It means that you really hone in on what is important to you and what your personal values are. And you don't let other people stomp on you or make their sense of emergency your urgency. You, you know, it's, it's, giving a fuck selectively. So if you're into a nomad lifestyle, if you're interested in what this really looks like in a rather raw, unfiltered way, and perhaps you give too many fucks about too many things, then that is what this channel is for. All right. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's the way this thing goes. Uh, if you're interested, subscribe. If you hated everything, then unsubscribe. You know what to do. Bye, see you later.